InfoSec and Cyborg Hacks wants to help you pass the Security Plus exam. We have three separate hacks on the channel helping you through the process of studying for and taking the exam. But what about the years after when it's time to recertify? Well, InfoSec Bootcamp instructor Tommy Gober walks you through all the different ways you can earn your continuing education units, how many you need to recertify your Security Plus, and some less known activities that can keep your CEU numbers rising and making ongoing learning an ongoing process, not something you need to cram at the end of three years. If you want to know more, well, it's all here today in this Cyberwork Hack. Hey, welcome to this uh, new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution or a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. Now, to that end, Tommy Gober is an InfoSec instructor, and among his many areas of expertise, he is a bootcamp instructor for CompTIA's Security Plus certification. Uh, we've, I've talked to him for several episodes now. Please go back and check them out. Uh, but for today's CyberWork hack specifically, Tommy is going to walk us through CompTIA's continuing education requirements and how to renew your your Security Plus certification uh, a few years after you've received it. So thanks for joining me today, Tommy. Thanks for having me again. Uh, so Tommy, let's start with the cert renewal process. I mean, we're starting with people who may not have ever uh, gone for a certification before. Why does CompTIA require cert holders to pursue additional learning in order to keep their cert current? And how long after being certified do you have to start thinking about being recertified? Why do we have to do it? Uh, I mean, Look at the pace of technology changing, right? I mean, it's yeah. it's changing so quick, and mm -hmm. the amount of time that that CompTIA and instructors invest in the instructional material leading up to an exam, there's kind of a lock-in effect that happens because technology continues to evolve, and we can't change all of it all the time. And so, some of the material can age, <laughs> age out. For and sure. so we need to cons consistently go through and refresh. To that end, uh, CompTIA refreshes their exams every three years. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people are like, oh, that's, it, that seems so quick. And it's like, yeah, but that's like, a, a, that's in a lifetime of, of, uh, of technology. I mean, when you look through any kind of, there, there have been several huge things. This is going to revolutionize all technology. And then it fizzles out in a year. 18 months later, it's a completely different thing that's going to revolutionize right. everything. Yeah. I mean, at the time at the time we're recording this, right, uh, chat GPT has only been out for a little over a year. And so much has changed in that past year. Yeah. And so there's just things are constantly evolving. And so every three years, CompTIA comes out with a new form of their certification. And you need to re-up your certification in that same three-year cycle. So whatever day you took the exam, you have three years to um, to renew your certification. You can re-up either by sitting for another exam. Some people do that. Mm -hmm. Or you can take a new exam. So you can take a, a, a higher level, as CompTIA refers to them. Um, so for Security Plus, for example, you can take either the CYSA or the pen test plus, and those renew your security plus. Gotcha. Also, if you have like network plus, for example, when you pass your security plus, that renews your network plus as well. Gotcha. Um, and your A plus. And so it, there's this stackable thing yeah. that they've got. Yeah. But I, by I, time I, lifting all boats. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh -huh. there, it's there's new material in those new exams. And so you can either take the same exam, you can take a, a higher level one or the third option that you've got and what we're talking about here today are the continuing education units. And so there are different uh, numbers of continuing education units you need for different CompTIA exams, but um, you can gain those different through different avenues, different channels, and you present those say like, hey, I did this, 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 and this. This prepares me for, you know, this keeps me current. Um, it, with the current state of the art and technology. Um, CompTIA looks at it, goes, signs off, says, yep, you're good to go. And so there's a fee associated with that, but it is far and away cheaper than sitting for another exam. Gotcha. Uh, so what are some of the common methods that CompTIA suggests for accruing continue, continuing education units or CEUs? Yeah, so they've, they've got a few different ways that you can do this. Um, you can take other vendor certifications. So ISC squared, EC council, Cisco, Amazon, it, any of the other uh, 
certifications that exist out there in the wild, you can take those and um, you get you are granted so many continuing education units for completing those. You can also do any kind of professional development training. So maybe you go and sit on a training for a week on AWS or something. You can get for the amount of time. You didn't get a certification out of that, but the time spent, you get that. Uh, if you're taking college courses, take an entire semester, um, that'll count for that as well. So those of you that are working on uh, cybersecurity degrees or maybe a second degree if, if you're on an MBA or something too. Yeah. That counts. Um, you can also, um, you can do what they, how they frame it. It's like IT um, functions, you know, the, the things that you're doing in the IT world. So you can teach and mentor others. If you have a, a mm. beginner mm -hmm. coming in, you can uh, earn credits that way. You can create instructional materials. So like new hires coming in, like, hey, here's a how-to yeah. guide for doing this, mm -hmm. um, having that. And then um, also if you help CompTIA develop the next round of instructional or, or test uh, items, test development, uh, CompTIA has a method for that. They're subject matter experts, CompTIA, SME. You can search for that whole thing. They're, they'd love to uh, get input for that. Yeah. Uh, publishing articles, white papers, academic papers, blog posts, books, podcasts, videos. <laughs> yep, That's yep. why you're doing it, aren't you, Chris? It is. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm <laughs> accruing CEUs for a certification that I don't hold, but, you know, someday <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, I think that's uh, that, that there's some really great insights in there, especially the idea that like you learn, you retain information best by teaching it to someone else. I mean, I think that's one of the, the, the great axioms of all time. Mm -hmm. um, so do you uh, you've given us a, a bunch of uh, great ways right there. Do you have any unusual sort of hacks or suggestions for interesting ways to earn your CEUs, anything that cert holders frequently forget about or don't know exist? I mean, you mentioned things like writing blog posts or writing, you know, course material. What, what are what are some of the deep cuts? Uh, I would say becoming a boot camp instructor. <laughs> no, yeah, that's um, gonna do it, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, some of the, the ones, the ways a lot of folks forget to do this is, mm -hmm. is to publish blogs. Yeah. You don't have to have a major blog you know, it, you know, what does it take to create a blog? Um, you know, the back in the day we had, what was it? Blogger and all those mm -hmm. uh, blog spot. And such. Yeah, absolutely. But you're just documenting. It's kind of like a journal, you know, you're, you're putting yeah. stuff out there. You're creating that um, how to guides, making little quick uh, YouTube videos, TikTok videos, mm -hmm. all of that counts. Um, okay. And so, yeah, that's the, those are the, the fun ones to do. Mm -hmm. um, teaching and mentoring others. You got a new hire, tell your, Supervisor, like, hey, I need to be doing these continuing education units. Can I take her under my wing and and you know grow this new hire into you know being our next sysadmin? Yeah. Now, is there a, a particular way of of logging your your hours or whatever? Like, how do you how do you sort of document this for for Hamptia? I recommend folks keep a you know keep a folder in your bottom desk drawer. Um, okay. Any documentation that you've got. If you're going to a conference, you know, if you're going to go to a conference and, you know, you're getting all the swag and all that, yeah, yeah. Um, generally you can check with those um, organizers and they will provide some sort of um, certificate, you know, for you being at their event and right. talking with vendors and finding out what the current material is. If you have a vendor coming to your, um, to your organization's offices, you can get documentation from them just doing a sales pitch, showcasing their information. Mm -hmm. So that's a fun way to do it. Anything that's documentation, any kind of documentation you get, drop it in that binder. And CompTIA has a little web form that they've got where you can put in all the stuff. You provide evidence of that. Well, if you've got it all parked in one spot, that's not a hard thing to do. And if you've just kind of yeah. kept up with this over the years... It's not all coming down to the wire there. Well, let's talk about down to the wire. We had a previous uh, Hacks episode. I hope you'll all check out about uh, the uh, the pros and cons and mostly pros of, of, of doing boot camp uh, style training to, to get the, you know, and one of the things we said with self- uh, self-learning, of course, is that uh, in theory, you know, you're going to buckle down every single day, but in practice, you might, you know, skip a, three days or seven days or 45 days or whatever. So um, <laughs> what advice do you have to make sure that people are not leaving the process of earning CEUs until the last minute before your cert expires? I mean, what, what's a good way to incorporate CEU earning behaviors into your day-to-day -day operations? That's that's 
it's that that bottom desk drawer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I mean, you become like this like CEU addict. Like, is this yeah. documentable? Is this? Do I get a certificate yeah. of this? Can I get a certificate? It's of like this? a it's like a coupon clipper. Like you're just like, where, 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 where's <laughs> my next discount coming from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, yeah, there's gonna be like some CEU influencers out there that you could follow. Oh, but oh yeah, there's a niche. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, TikTok, here we come, man. <laughs> I love um, that. Okay, so yeah, so this, uh, so your your advice here is is to just sort of be constantly looking for the opportunity and constantly documenting it, documenting it. Um, and if you see, um, if you see someone's how to guide and it's maybe a little out of date, update that. Share with the technology mm-hmm. community. I mean, we're it's the whole standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, yes. we, we all oh, where we're at in technology to those who came before us who documented this stuff and shared it. I mean, looking back, even back in the late 90s, the Linux documentation project. I mean, uh, I learned yeah. so much back in the day um, growing through what those uh, what that team of contributors were all putting in. And then being I was I was proud the day that I was able to provide um, my own input to uh, you know, such resources, helping others, hopefully. It's it's hard for me to quantify how many people have engaged with that. Yeah. But if it's like, if it's, if it's smoothing the path for others behind me, it's, it's doing some good. And so that's what CompTIA is looking for. So just document, document, document. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, 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 for people who are, who maybe feel a little insecure about that or whatever, I like, I, the first time that you uh, do something like that, where you, you know, right, even the most like perfunctory how to guide or an update or whatever, like the, the, the first time that someone like writes you and says, Oh, that really helped me out. Thank you so much. Or whatever. Like it just, that's you a know, boost. boy, that is a, that is a, that is a serotonin ping right there. That's going to, that's going to keep you going. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, it, it, it is very much about standing on the shoulders of giants, but it's also about like, you know, uh, many hands make light work, you know, like every, every one of us is going to be, uh, you know, pushing a few grains of sand out of the way to sort of like smooth the field or whatever. And, and if you, if you doing that can help you also to keep your cert up to, up to date, I think that's, that's really great advice. Um, so before we wrap up, Tommy, um, are there any commonalities between the CEU project for other CompTIA certs? I'm assuming that these all sort of worked the same way. Um, and do you have uh, suggestions you gave us also work for these other CompTIA certs? Yeah, so they they are all um, the they are all the same. Um, mm-hmm. it, like documentation, how many hours you need does vary. So for example, the Security Plus um, requires 50 continuing education units like 50 hours. Mm-hmm. It's not a one-to-one, uh, you know, an hour of instruction yields an hour of, of uh, yeah. CEUs. And the amount of hours you can get does max out. So if I'm getting, if I take a, uh, 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 if I sit through a, a vendor's presentation, that might only count for one hour. Mm-hmm. But we had to listen to this dude for, Three hours, <laughs> right? Right. So it's not it's not necessarily a one to one, but you you get that. Um, I th- I think the the two ones that almost completely fulfills it is like doing a taking a college class. Um, they have publishing a book, so like if you <laughs> yeah, put right, a right. book out, um, that counts for sixty hours. And it's yeah. like. That, that'll put me over the mark. Yeah, that's but, definitely how um, long it takes to write a book is 60 hours. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> easy. Sometimes some of these are a little bit harder than others. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. Um, so, so I'm assuming higher level same. certs is like just you're, you're, you're like 100 or above hours and things like that for like a CISSB or whatever. Yeah. So, well, like, um, so for CASP, for example. So you got like, or I think they're rephrasing it or they're rebranding it now. CompTIA is changing CASP into Security X. Yes. Okay. So, um, but CASP, for example, um, is kind of the the highest um, cybersecurity certification that CompTIA offers, and it requires 75 hours Mm -hmm. within those three years. So that means that every year you're putting in roughly about 25, you're getting 25 CEUs per year. But they, you know, if you have uh, pen test or CYSA, that renews Security Plus. If you have CASP, that renews pen test and security and CYSA and renews your security. So it's like you can kind of keep do this whole progression and then you're only having to focus on doing those hours for whatever your quote unquote top 
Okay. And it, it seems like they also kind of encourage you to do a sort of a, a little bit of everything rather than just do all, you know, apart from writing a book, but like, you know, don't just all just don't sit through a million vendor, you know, demonstrations <laughs> or whatever and things like that. Yeah. They don't want you doing that. They don't want you like only doing, you know, blog posts or, or TikTok videos or whatever. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Well, that's, that's great. Tommy Gover, thank you for making the, the cert renewal process a bit less fraught. I know we, we get that, that question constantly where, you know, what, what's, what's, you know, what can we uh, uh, technically use and how do we document it? So I think this is going to be very helpful. For people. Don't wait. That's the big Don't thing. Wait. Don't wait, get it going now. All right. Well, Tommy Gover, thank you again for that. Thanks a lot. Uh, and thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, I uh, hope you'll share it with your colleagues and with forums and other social media accounts. Uh, and as always, uh, please subscribe to our podcast feed and YouTube page. Uh, you can just type in CyberWork InfoSec into any of them and you'll be well on your way. Uh, there's more to come, uh, more Security Plus videos with Tommy, so check those out. And if you have any topics you want us to cover, drop them into the comments. A lot of people who have commented have gotten, gotten their wish, so it could be you next. Uh, and until then, we will see you next time. Uh, and everybody, happy learning. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I asked experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.